Hello everyone, Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a group of very special constellations that we know as the Zodiac constellations. We'll look at where they're at in the sky and talk a little bit about what makes them so special to us and why people for thousands of years have thought there was something rather peculiar about these particular groups of stars. So let's load up Stellarium, our sky simulator, and jump right in. So here we are in Stellarium, right in front of the CERN and Earth and Space Center. We have our date set for May 28th and our time set for 10 o'clock at night, but that's not terribly important right now. Uh, we're looking for a group of stars in the sky, the zodiac stars. And those go all the way around the Earth. They're visible, some of them are visible throughout the year. And so we will take a look at what is visible tonight as well as what is visible on other nights as well. So to help us with that, what I'm going to do is use some of the magic of this program to turn off the Earth and the atmosphere so we can see all of the stars and we can see the Milky Way and the sun and all the planets and everything in all directions. It's like we're floating around in outer space. And we're looking for a group of stars that sit along the plane of our solar system. So the path that the sun, the moon, and all the planets seem to take through our sky. And we call that path the ecliptic. And you can see its line right here. This is the area that everything travels through. And if I bring up our planet labels, we'll see we have some dwarf planets. We can see the planet Mars is very close to that ecliptic line. Venus and Mercury, the sun sits right along it, and all of the planets follow along that line, including Jupiter and Saturn. So this is where everything that moves from our perspective, this is the line that it moves along. And the groups of stars that sit along those are the recognizable zodiac constellations. So I will bring up not only the lines, but also the names and the pictures to give us a better idea of what we're looking at here. And we can see all of the groups of stars that sit along this line are those very recognizable groups of zodiac constellations, including Ophiuchus here, which is not one of the traditional 12 zodiac signs, but we'll have another video talking about that a little bit later on. But all of these stars that sit along the ecliptic line here are considered special because those planets and the sun all move through them. Now you have to remember that ancient cultures, they studied the sky and kept track of the stars as they moved throughout the sky. And they noticed that there were some objects that seemed to move around outside of the normal yearly patterns. They would be in different spots in the sky throughout different times of the year. And they called those the wanderers of the sky because they would wander around. And the Greek word for wanderer is planetaris, which we turned into the word planets. And so these were what wandered around the sky. And they thought that those were the gods in their heaven, the gods on Mount Olympus walking around in the sky and doing their normal godly things. And so for them and other ancient cultures, it became very important on what the gods were doing, where they were at in the sky kind of meant what mood they would be in. And um, that would have an effect on the people here on earth. So whenever you were born, that is when, you know, they would look at the sun and the planets and the moon find out where everything was, and that meant a lot for the path that your life would take. And that's what we get in modern-day horoscopes. It's a sort of continuation of that. And the way you got your birth sign is where the sun was on the day of your birth. And so we see that here in May, the sun is in Taurus the Bull right now. And it's a little bit off because the sky has shifted. The earth has moved around a little bit since the ancient Greeks were around here. So you're a little bit off your traditional birth sign um, than you would normally be. But that is basically where that comes from. Now, there's nothing scientific about any of that. There is no scientific reason that where the sun or the planets are on the day you were born will have anything to do with your life or how it's going to turn out or your fate. Um, it is 
nowadays just a fun thing to do to read the newspaper and see what your horoscope is going to be, but there's no scientific data for it having any actual effect on your life. And that is really all that makes these zodiac stars so important to us, is just they sit along this line where everything that we noticed moves, well, that's the line that it moves along. Well, thank you everyone for joining me and learning a little bit about those zodiac constellations, where they fall in the sky, and why they're a little bit more important to us than some of the other constellations out there. Now remember, the important thing is to get out there and take a look at your night sky, maybe find your zodiac constellation, but remember that on the day you were born, you're not going to see your zodiac constellation in the nighttime sky. It'll be on the opposite side, right behind the sun. So you want to go out about six months later, and that's when you'll see your zodiac constellation up there in the nighttime sky. In any case, my name is Wayne from the Southern Earth and Space Center. I hope you have a great day, and remember to get out there and take a look at your night skies.